COVID-19 has rapidly transformed how we live and work. Okay, cut. We all know that, so let's break it down with some numbers. McKinsey reported that the pandemic sped up digital transformation by a factor of 30, with five years of digital transformation achieved in just 60 days of the first lockdown. As a result, digital marketing has never been in more demand and only looks set to grow in the future. At Growth Tribe, we recently released our Skills of Tomorrow report 2021, which outlines the top skills to master to stay future-proof. So you can be in the top 1% and at the top of your game. So what skills do you need to master for 2021? Let's find out. Hey guys, my name's Julian and I work in the marketing team here at Growth Tribe. I'm also the author of the Skills of Tomorrow Report 2021, which you can find as a resource in the description, so don't forget to check it out below. In the report, we surveyed nearly 1,300 professionals to measure their marketing skills and capabilities. What we found were two clear groups, the talkers, and the doers. The talkers have high ambitions to acquire digital skills, but fail to act on that ambition, while the doers have high ambitions and take active steps in upskilling themselves. So here are the top five skills to master in 2021 and beyond. To move from a talker to a doer. Skill to master number one, a growth mindset. In our previous video on marketing skills, we talked about mastering digital psychology to compel and persuade your customers. Yet if digital psychology is about your customers, then a growth mindset is about you and your team psychology. In his book, Good to Great, Jim Collins set out to discover what made some companies go from being good to great. He embarked on a five-year study of companies whose stock returns had skyrocketed relative to their competitors. There were several important factors, but one of the most important was the type of leader that led the company into greatness. They were not larger than life characters full of ego, they were modest people who asked questions and confronted any brutal answers. And we've all been there. We've let a fear of failure hold us back. But having a growth mindset or being a growth mindset leader means looking failure in the face with a belief that you will succeed in the end. While it might not seem like an outright skill, it is fundamental to addressing skills as growth mindset leaders and teams are constantly looking to improve. They face their own weaknesses and ask frankly what skills they and the company need in the future. The doers have a growth mindset. They believe that skills can be nurtured and developed. They accept mistakes and failures and alter their strategies accordingly. Having a growth mindset then is the skill of skills. It is fundamental to being open to learning and developing skills as a team, as an individual, and as an organization. I highly recommend reading Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by Dr. Carol Dweck, the world-renowned Stanford University psychologist who founded the idea of a growth mindset. She gives loads of great examples of how and why a growth mindset works from across sports, business, and even in relationships. You can also watch Carol's TED Talk, The Power of Believing That You Can Improve. I'll leave the video in the description so you can check it out below. Okay, moving on now. Skill number two, rapid experimentation. Rapid experimentation came out as a key weakness in the Skills of Tomorrow report. A key feature of a growth mindset organization is the number of experiments that they run per day, per week, and per year, and is a key skill for high-performing teams and organizations. In his book, Experimentation Works, Stefan H. Tomka found that those companies that experiment significantly outperform the S&P 500 index, and what he calls the Experimenter's Index. In the book, he says, for better or worse, our actions tend to rely on experience, intuition, and beliefs. But this all too often doesn't work. And all too often, we discover that ideas that are truly innovative go against our experience and assumptions. Relying on your manager or leader to define the viability of an idea is the very definition of a fixed mindset, the very opposite of a growth mindset. Instead, launching rapid experiments provides rapid learnings for growth for teams and organizations. And the lessons often fly in the face of what you think you know. Being open to being wrong on your assumptions and testing and learning is fundamental to your growth and success. I highly recommend watching David's video on the growth process developed to help companies grow with an experiment-driven approach. You can also check out David Bland and Alex Osterwalder's book, Testing Business Ideas, a field guide to rapid experimentation. A simple, practical guide that includes a robust framework and step-by-step -step descriptions of 44 experiments to systematically test marketing ideas. And finally, it's still an old one, but it's a good one, check out the article from Harvard Business Review, a step-by-step -step guide to smart business experiments. As they discuss, companies that embrace this data-driven approach will be able to delegate authority to run small-scale experiments to even low levels of management. This will encourage the out-of-box innovations that lead to real transformation. This leads us nicely onto skill number three, data and analytics. Arguably the most important skill on this list 
is the ability to use data to inform decision making. We saw that the biggest difference between the talkers and the doers was using data insights from experiments, presenting experiment data and having a clearly defined data strategy. We live in a world where technology has enabled data on a scale never seen before. The numbers are mind boggling. In 2020, the entire digital universe is estimated to have reached 44 zettabytes, which means there are 40 times more bytes than there are stars in the observable universe. And in the last two years alone, an astonishing 90% of the world's data has been created. Yet despite all this data, the greatest shortcoming is that teams are not utilizing it to inform their decisions. There's simply a lack of skills, and in an increasingly complex world where market conditions can change rapidly, you need to be able to evaluate which marketing efforts are making progress. As management guru Peter Drucker famously said, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Today, it is easier than ever to get an idea off the ground. The barriers to entry have almost disappeared. Cloud computing is free. Social media is free. Competitive research is free. We live in a digital world and the bits don't cost anything. Data is abundant. This means you can build and launch something, measure its effect, and learn from it to build something better next time. And this is where being data-led and analytics comes in. There's still, of course, a place for instinct and experience, but these are your source of inspiration. Just remember that instincts are experiments and data is proof. So what are some resources to become data-led and upgrade your skills? I highly recommend reading Lean Analytics. Here you can learn the Lean methodology, analytics fundamentals, the data-driven mindset, finding the one metric that matters, types of business models, and tons of case studies and examples. You can also try out Google suite of learning materials on Google Analytics, Google Data Studio, and much more. Or why not take a look at gopractice.io from marketing guru, Sean Ellis. GoPractice is a simulator for learning data-driven product growth. Learn how to use data to build and grow products in this immersive simulator. You'll go beyond theory to learn by doing and work with real data and leading analytics tools like Amplitude and Sensor Tower. It's worth a look. The best way to learn is through doing. If you check it out, let us know in the comments below. Moving on now to skill number four, using attribution models. There's a famous quote that says, half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. A lot has changed since this was said. In 2001, the average customer used only two touch points when buying an item. Today, customers used an average of six touch points according to Oracle. But do you know which touch points are most important in your customer's buying journey? Luckily, attribution models do. They determine which touch point gets the credit for the sale. Let's use an example of a customer journey and where an attribution model can help. Let's say a customer finds your site by clicking one of your Google ads. She returns one week later by clicking over from a social network. That same day, she comes back a third time via one of your email campaigns. And a few hours later, she returns again directly and makes a purchase. So the question is, which marketing channel gets the credit? Well, it's not that simple, really. They all played a part. And so there are six attribution models that you can use. First interaction, last interaction, last non-direct click. Linear, time decay, and position-based. And they all attribute credit in their own way. I won't go into the details of each here, but I'll leave a great explanation from CXL in the description below so you can check it out. And there are a number of tools out there that can manage cross-channel attribution modeling. These include HubSpot, Ruler Analytics, Branch, ActiveCampaign, C3 Metrics, Windsor.ai, Attribution, and Dream Data. Check them out and let us know if you find them useful for your attribution modeling. And rounding things off, we have skill number five, sharing learnings. According to International Data Corp, companies in the Fortune 500 lose a combined 31.5 billion per year from employees failing to share knowledge effectively. And we've all been there, trying to recreate the wheel, repeating others' mistakes, or trying to find that resource that you just can't find. It can be frustrating and it's not very efficient. And with remote working during COVID-19 and the lack of face-to-face -face interaction, it's even more important to make sure that learnings are being shared across your team and your organization. According to Professor Christopher G. Myers at John Hopkins University, people can more effectively learn through collaborative two-way interactions with others at work. The person learning and the person sharing knowledge work together to construct an understanding of an experience, which better equips the learner to apply it in their own work. Interactive conversation and questioning allows the learner to understand the underlying reasons behind somebody else's actions, making it easier to adapt what's learned to a new situation or task. So how to put it into practice? First up, create a designated space for hands-on learning. Our environments directly affect how we interact. So we need to create spaces, virtual or in-person if possible, that facilitate hands-on learning. Step number two, endorse hands-on learning. Leadership should be encouraging employees to seek and share experiences often. So individuals feel confident seeking out knowledge without feeling that they're being annoying. 
Finally, step number three, plant starter seeds of hands-on learning. Leaders can encourage greater learning by jump-starting the process. For example, setting aside time at the beginning of a meeting to discuss any problems and to brainstorm ideas. Try reading HBR's article, How to Help Your Employees Learn From Each Other. Or check out the book, The Expertise Economy, How the Smartest Companies Use Learning to Engage, Compete and Succeed, and the chapter on peer-to-peer -peer learning especially. We're also writing a book at Growth Tribe called Upgrading Brains at Scale. It's about how to build a learning organization and touches on this topic in detail. You can sign up to be the first to hear about its release and get sneak peeks of the content by following this link. I'll also put it in the description for you. So there you have the top five skills to master for 2021. So you can stay at the top of your digital marketing game. Don't forget to check out the Skills of Tomorrow Report 2021 to find out more. And you can find all the links mentioned in the description. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you next time.